If you clicked on this video, then you obviously know which ETF I'm going to be looking at today. More importantly, we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of this ETF. But why has it struggled so much this year and what can you do about it? What are the pros and cons and how can you actually make money on dividend stocks outside of the number one dividend ETF that I'm going to be talking about today? Now, if you look at my screen, if you look and you'll see the Schwab uh, US Dividend Equity ETF SCHD, which is what we're talking about today, over the long haul since 2011 has returned almost 200 percent but if i go back to year to date it's actually down 3.8 percent but why is that why is it a dividend etf that continues to be on the top of the list for most investors doing so poorly uh today and the second part of this is where should you actually put your money instead of schd now i'll admit the, the track record for it, the inception date here from 2011 is very impressive. Uh, I will also say that some of the picks here in a high mega, mega, growth, uh, mega growth from a tech perspective have really sent this thing towards spinning somewhat towards the, the toilet. Now, the biggest holdings in here are not tech, but it's actually industrials. Industrials are 18%, financial services are another 15 So we haven't been able to ride that tech wave all the way up. Now, full disclosure, I do own SCHD. I've owned it for quite a while. I'm actually gonna be pivoting into some other ETFs from a dividend perspective. I'm gonna let you, uh, let you in on later in this video, so make sure you stay tuned. I think the biggest problem though with SCHD is not only its non-exposure uh, to tech, but the fact that there are so many other options out there uh, today that can, uh, that can provide you with future growth and one of those, candidly, right away, is just buy treasury bills uh, or put it into a high yield savings account at four and a half or five percent. Yeah, you're not going to get the potential upside, but this this uh, this only pays you uh, the the yield on this is three point five two percent. Not terrible, and certainly good if you can get the capital appreciation on the underlying uh, ETF along with the dividend. I don't see anything wrong with it. From this point on, you've made 200%, almost 200% on your initial investment while also collecting a very hefty 3.52% um, dividend. Now, if I go down here, you can actually see some of the other, the biggest companies they own, Amgen, Cisco, Abvi, Home Depot, Broadcom, Coke. These are all great names known individually, but the whole point of an ETF is you don't have to pick stocks. You don't have to manage it. You don't have to you know, move with the market. You can kind of just set it and forget it. So let's look at some of the pros. So diversification, uh, SCHD does have a lot of diversification, uh, but again, we've missed out on some of the gains from a tech perspective. Uh, it does have a good dividend focus. It does pay a, a, an abnormally high yield from a dividend perspective, even compared to things like uh, VIG, SPHD, uh, not JEPI, which I'm gonna go into. And then it has a very, very low expense ratio. So the one thing it does better than just about every other dividend ETF or dividend compound or ETF that I go over is the expense ratio is very, very low. So I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Now, one of the articles I pulled up here uh, was brought out two weeks ago on the 12th. It actually says, you know, this is from uh, the street. I'll link this down below. But why is it done so miserable when it's such a great, when it's done so well? And really it comes down to the 3.6 yield is great, but we've missed out on all the gains. Uh, and and we're, we're basically losing money to treasury bills or just a high yield savings account. Now I will say the track record on this has been incredible and, and to this article's point, it has been a number one pick for a lot of people. Um, part of the poor performance, like I said, is there's no fang. Um, there's, there's just, tech has just ran up last year, this year versus last year where it took a beating. Um, if you look and compare this to SPY, uh, SCHD has dr drastically underperformed the market. So you would have been better off buying SPY um, or VTO or VIG this year versus having to buy uh, SCHD, even if you're banking on dividends, you could have taken your 16 to 18% out of the market um, and you would have made well more than that on appreciation on capital. So if you've noticed, there's also been an outflow. Um, you've seen people, uh, you know, after says, after two strong years of steady inflows, the new money investors beginning to dry up and inflows have started to go down, which is not something you want to see. Uh, so let's actually go down here and look at um, some of the other alternatives they go over. So the PD, the P and E ratio uh, is pretty low, but again, there's not a lot of inflows. 
and it's just missing the rally from the tech sector. So we need something that's a little more inverted towards tech and we need something um, that still keeps that expense ratio uh, very, very low. Also, one of the other things uh, that, that SCHD doesn't do very well is it doesn't have a lot of international exposure um, and the dividend dependence here is a big one. Now, one thing I want you to remember is um, one question I have to ask, continually ask is, does declining earning growth mean declining dividends growth? So if that's true, then SCHD is in trouble. Now, I'm going to go back over here to ETF.com. We're actually going to look at SCHD. So we went over some of the pros. We went over some of the cons. Um, but, you know, what is it? What does it look like from a technical perspective? All right. So we talked about fund flow. If I go out and look at fund flow, even over the last week, uh, this is being recorded on August 22nd. The fund flow here has absolutely collapsed even in the last week. Now, uh, pulling back out here, the performance even on the 10 year looks great, but the year to date, I'm actually negative and I'm even worse on net asset value. The assets under management or AUM has started to slow down. Um, it's got a really low expense ratio, but it does have a lot of competing uh, ETFs here. Now, I'm gonna link down in the description uh, one composer symphony I created actually two sorry two that uh, will help you if you're if you're using composer which I, I'll link a description up here to actually set up composer and get that going but if you're using composer you can just download these symphonies straight into your workbook uh, or into the platform and start trading against those today but a couple if you're not using composer or you'd rather trade uh, just one or two maybe dividend ETFs and not worry about so much automation but you want to pick another one or pick a couple others to look at. One of the ones I will tell you to look at off the top is Jeppy. So Jeppy's not uh, Jeppy's not a, a complete uh, rip and replace, and it's not meant to be uh, a like for like. But I like Jeppy because the expense ratio is higher, uh, but you've had better returns over the last year. So we're looking at 5.37 percent. Again, I know the expense ratio is much higher, but your your performance is, has been much better. The inception date's not quite as long, so we don't have as long a uh, a track record here, but the yield is is much higher. So, you know, you're paying a higher expense ratio, but you're also getting a better yield and you have better return on equity. Uh, what I like about Jeppy is you have a huge exposure to a lot of these tech names. So Amazon, Adobe, Microsoft, MasterCard, somewhat of a, uh, of a, of a tech name, but the biggest sector here is technology uh, for this, this dividend ETF. It, I'm not going to say it's perfect. You know, I think the expense ratio um, and the low, uh, the low, tr the small track record that it has does provide some, some concern. I'll say some concern. And there's not a lot of international exposure, so that's one. Uh, the other one, if you're looking at something outside of SCHD because you don't feel like it's going to recover, um, or you're just, you know, you're just kind of done. Maybe you're done with Schwab. You could look at the Invesco. Uh, this is the S&P 500 high dividend, low volatility, which is, I mean, that's exactly what we want. Um, you do have year to date earnings are down. Uh, however, your expense ratio is a little bit less than what Jeppy is. Um, your dividend yield is 4.3% and you do have uh, a little bit more into tech here than you do in SCHD. I'm going to put VIG over here. I'm going to actually talk about VIG. Uh, from a Vanguard perspective, the expense ratio on this one, same as SCHD, uh, but your year to date is 6.69% and your yield is uh, 1.94. So if I had to choose one to d directly invest in, uh, if I had to rip and replace SCHD, it would be VIG. And there's a few reasons. One, the expense ratio is the exact same, so I'm not losing any money to, to outside uh, expenses or management fees, which cuts into my profits. Number two is the assets under management are actually higher. Uh, there's a bigger volume of assets under here than what SCHD is doing with Schwab. And number three, the inception date. So it has an extra five years of trailing returns that I can see. So from the from a max perspective, and I zoom out here, uh, it's been able to uh, appreciate much higher and much faster than what SCHD has done with an extra five years to look at. I'm not saying this is the only one to invest in. What I am saying is this has a bigger focus on uh, if you look here, electronic tech and tech services. So if you feel like technology will continue to run up and you feel like technology is going to continue to uh, explode into 2023 or 2024, I think VIG's the place to go. However, uh, if you do use Composer, I've created two different 
uh, symphonies is what they call them, composer. I'm gonna link those down in the description as well. First one is Smarter Dividends, and what this does is, uh, I'll have four dividends here, and if the five-day, four uh, dividend ETFs, if the five-day moving average of the price of SPY is greater than the 100 moving day average price of SPY, I'll end up weighting these four ETFs equally. And in this one, I've got some real estate. Uh, I do have VIG here, but I've added some diversification from a real estate perspective. And then if the weight is not equal, as in the, the five-day moving average price is, is not as lower than that, uh, I'm just gonna buy short-term treasury bonds. And then the other 35%, I have bonds. So if you're looking for more diversification, from an ETF perspective, you don't wanna put all your money into one ETF, even if the expense ratio is low, even if the yield is high, and even if the assets under management is higher, this might be something to look at. I'll caveat with this, you don't necessarily have to use Composer in order to do this. You can actually pull these ETFs out, put them into something like a Schwab, a TD Ameritrade, a Fidelity, a Robinhood, an M1, and just directly buy those. The benefit and sort of the bonus with this is, you're able to 